Welcome to Mission Gathering Issaquah. We strive to be a progressive, LGBTQIA affirming, anti-racist Christian community located in Issaquah, Washington. Regardless of your gender identity, sexuality, race, religious beliefs, or ability, you have a place at our table and we need your voice. We value inclusion, social justice, hard questions, and we believe that loving God means loving people. We're so glad you joined us today. Enjoy the service. Welcome to week two of our new series, Earth, Connecting with Christ Within Creation. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Duwamish people who are still here. We honor with gratitude both the land and the Duwamish tribe. I just want to share uh, with you a song that I wrote um, about a year and a half ago, so right before the pandemic, but it actually just really speaks to so many of the things that I think a lot of us have been feeling uh, in this time, anxiety, worry. I know for me, I grew up um, and have just faced throughout my life a lot of anxiety. And nature is actually something that's really been helpful for me to be out in nature, to observe nature, because really uh, it always puts things into perspective for me. Uh, It always gives me kind of a bird's eye view and allows me to really just see my place in world in the world and in, you know in the planet and um, I really love uh, this, the words of Jesus in Matthew 626 he he says you know look at the birds they don't they don't harvest they don't sow they don't uh, store up in storehouses they they just trust they trust in the way of things they trust that source uh, that God will provide you know on a daily basis and um, I think for for me, that's always just been a reminder to let go of trying to control and, and build up and protect myself against the future, but to really just be in the moment and trust what the moment has to offer, and that really the nature is abundant. Um, and so this song has been a reminder uh, for me, uh, especially in this past year, and I hope that it's a blessing to you. Rise up, child, dust in your eyes. The earth is already for you to arrive. Rise up, child, feet still unshown. Nothing like you has come before. Be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing, just look at the birds. Be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing, just look at the birds. Now be still and notice your breath As sure as the sun sets in the west Come now be still, watch your energy rise 
The strong as the moon carries the tide. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Just look at the birds. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Just look at the birds. And featherless we fly over earth and sky. In our ancient home. We come into our own, yeah. And featherless we fly over earth and sky. Then I ancient home. We come into our own So be anxious for nothing Be anxious for nothing Just look at the birds Well, be anxious for nothing Be anxious for nothing just look at the birds Be anxious for nothing Be anxious for nothing Just look at the birds Be anxious for nothing Be anxious for nothing just look at the birds. Here at Mission Gathering, we believe that communion is an open table, that no one is excluded from participating, from receiving the elements. And I have here with me the elements, the bread and the cup, and. The bread, this is like the bread that Jesus held on the night he was betrayed. And I just want to encourage you for a moment. Think about the journey that this bread has taken to get here. From, from soil and seed uh, to grain, then grain harvested. And this cup, you know, if you have some juice or some wine, again, think of the process and the journey that it's taken to get here that it was a vine and it produced grapes and these grapes were then pressed and left in darkness to sit and to age and and then it was prepared and, and bottled and, and we can in this moment really receive it as the life of Christ poured out. We hope you can join us this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom for Pub Ecology. So grab your favorite drink and let's talk about ways that we can be more sustainable and loving towards the earth. We'll see you this Wednesday. 
Mark your calendar for May 5th. We are going to have Marnie Swart, an expert in urban farming, join us for a special workshop to teach us how to do sustainable urban gardening uh, for anyone. So we mark your calendars for May 5th. Uh, it'll be on Zoom and we're going to learn some practical ways that we can uh, be more sustainable. The theoretical physicist Sean Carroll has said that everyone and everything that you have ever known is made up of the same stuff. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. They make up the atoms that make up everything. He says that on a fundamental level, when you get down to what everything is made up of in reality, it's all the same. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. So the atoms that make up my body contain those same particles and the atoms that make up this chair I'm sitting in. So he says at a fundamental level, there is no such thing as living things and non-living things. We're all made up of the same stuff. You are the cosmos. You are nature. And it is all connected. So the hydrogen atoms that make up your body were formed in the stars that exploded billions of years ago. Carl Sagan famously said that we are all made of star stuff. Genesis says that from the dust you came into the dust you shall return. In light of astrophysics, the reality is from stardust you came and to stardust you shall return. That same Genesis story has the story of the creation of humanity. In Genesis 1.28 said God Bless them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. That Hebrew word for dominion, rada, means to rule. And in the ancient world, to be uh, in the image of God meant to be kind of God's representative in the earth or ambassadors of the earth to rule and live in a way that God would. So you can be a good ruler who cares for people and cares for the land, um, like a Black Panther kind of ruler, or you can be an evil ruler that oppresses people and oppresses the land, like Dr. Evil from Austin Powers. And the track record for us on earth, we have not typically been the good kind of ruler. And we have used that Genesis passage to say that the earth is ours to use however we please. And Christians have used that verse to justify taking over other people's land and resources, to justify the doctrine of discovery that allowed for Europeans to take land from other people and cultures. It was used to justify the removal of the Duwamish people from Seattle in the 19th century. But the next chapter in Genesis 2, verse 15, says that humans were uh, made from the soil and we were given a command to cultivate the soil. And the Hebrew word for cultivate literally means to serve. We, we don't talk about this verse as much in our history that humans were made from the earth and then commanded to serve the earth, to care for it, to, take, to, to cultivate it, to allow it to thrive and grow. 
we have not used that interpretation much when it comes to our treatment of the planet, of life. Uh, environmental scientist Dr. Hayden Washington has said that by viewing nature as beneath us, or even more radically formed by us, humans pretend we can manipulate nature without consequence. As we head into Earth Day this week, I was made aware of a day called Earth Overshoot Day. And it marks the day of the year where we have consumed more resources than what the Earth can replenish in a year. So imagine that you have a year's worth of food to last from January to December. The day that you use up that year supply would be your overshoot day. And it's said that the Earth's overshoot day for 2020 last year was August 22nd. That's the moment where we used up Earth's resources to the point that it could not replenish itself. We are not caring for the Earth. In Leviticus, we get a very different image in the Bible of our, our place in the world um, than that subdue and dominate view. Leviticus 25, 23 to 24, And God said, The land shall not be sold permanently, for the land is mine. With me you are but immigrants and tenants. We do not own the earth. We are renters in this earth. So what if we stopped acting like it was ours to do as we please? What would it look like? The old way of thinking about God and the world saw humanity as the center of the universe. The church doctrine used to teach this, um, that earth is the center of the universe, the most important part of the universe. And that God was somehow removed from that. God was out there. And our goal became, as Christians, to get from here, this earth, to there, where God is. Because this earth is where all the bad stuff happens. So when we want to die, when we die, we want to make sure we get to where God is. We escape the earth. Richard Rohr says, that for much of history, the central message of Christianity, incarnation, God in the flesh, was not really taken seriously by most Christians. In fact, our whole salvation plan was largely about getting away from this earth. So what if we followed the commands in Genesis and Leviticus, not to consume, but to cultivate, not to subdue the earth, but to serve it? To serve means to love, to care for, to respect. How would we live if we saw the earth in that way? As um, the golden rule applied to all of creation around us, because I am made up of the same stuff of, as all that is around me. So what if I uh, did unto the earth as I want uh, the earth to be done to me? Do unto others as you want them to do to you. Love your neighbor as yourself. What if we love the earth as we love ourselves? Christmas Eve, 1968. It was the end of a very hard year. Um, it was called the year that shattered America. Um, 1968, you had the horrors of Vietnam being uh, made known to the world. You had the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., um, the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy. You had Tommy Smith and John Carlos who were on the U.S. Olympic team, and they protested racism during the Olympics, and the U.S. cut them off the team. You had North Korea that had kidnapped um, a U.S. boat off the coast um, and uh, took them as prisoners of war. It was a hard year across the world. And at the end of 1968, Apollo 8 was launched into space. And astronaut Bill Anders took a picture of what he saw and it became one of the most famous photos of all time. Biochemist Gregory Petsko said this about the picture. Our whole planet suddenly in this image seemed tiny, vulnerable, and incredibly lonely against the vast blackness of the cosmos. It also seemed whole in a way that no map could illustrate. 
Regional conflict could be dismissed as trivial compared with environmental dangers that threatened all of humanity. Traveling together through the void on this fragile looking marble, a picture of earth with no borders. That picture inspired the creation of Earth Day. Astronaut Billy Anders said we came all this way to explore the moon. The most important thing is that we discovered the Earth. We saw the Earth in a new way, our shared home, whose our survival as humanity is dependent on the Earth's survival. Ilya Delia is a Franciscan sister, and uh, she's a theologian with doctorate degrees in both theology and science. She said, we're reaching a fork in the road. Two paths are diverging on planet Earth. The one we choose will make all the difference for life of the planet. Shall we undergo extinction? Or shall we wake up to this dynamic evolutionary universe and the rise of consciousness toward an integral wholeness? I want to wake up to do unto the Earth as I want to be treated. Integral wholeness, um, the Hebrew word for salvation, uh, that's what it means, wholeness. And we are partnering with God to bring wholeness to not just ourselves, but our communities, our societies, our planet. What is the most astounding fact you can share with us about the universe? The most astounding fact the most astounding fact is the knowledge that the atoms that comprise life on earth the atoms that make up the human body are traceable to the crucibles that cooked light elements into heavy elements in their core under extreme temperatures and pressures these stars the high mass ones among them went unstable in their later years. They collapsed and then exploded, scattering their enriched guts across the galaxy. Guts made of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and all the fundamental ingredients of life itself. These ingredients become part of gas clouds that condense, collapse, form the next generation of solar systems stars with orbiting planets. And those planets now have the ingredients for life itself. So that when I look up at the night sky, and I know that yes, we are part of this universe, we are in this universe, but perhaps more important than both of those facts is that the universe is in us. When I reflect on that fact, I look up Many people feel small because they're small and the universe is big, but I feel big because my atoms came from those stars. There's a level of connectivity. That's really what you want in life. You want to feel connected. You want to feel relevant. You want to feel like a, you're a participant in the goings-on of activities and events around you. That's precisely what we are just by being alive.
I'm going to jump on Zoom and I hope you can join me uh, so we can talk more about the message and catch up with one another. We'll see you there. The link is in the Facebook post.